So here we are in Banbury for a Instavolt charging event. Now, the reason I'm here isn't just because I'm really, really into chargers, but of course I am anyway. Uh, but it's because I'm really into EV conversions and I heard that Everati were gonna be here. And also there's a Fisker here as well, Fisker Ocean. So uh, you see it in the background there. Let's go and check it out. <laughs> So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? That is amazing. Don't forget there's an EV meet at the Caffeine and Machine on the 11th of November. It's from 10 o'clock to 1 p.m. You do need a ticket, get on Caffeine Machine. It's for the Hill at Stratford. £10 a car. I'll see you there. So what we got here, we got NG5, i3, a Renault, EQC, the Enyaq, Porsche Taycan, Cupra, Q4, I-Pace, uh, CLA is it? No, GLA, that's it. Uh, new Lexus and the Fisker. The weight is only weeks now, sort of six to eight weeks. Uh, it's got the 22 inch uh, three spokes, very smart. It's in California mode at the moment where all the windows open, even these little, little ones as well, little tiny ones. So that's pretty cool. But the interior is gorgeous. And the range, I think the WLTP you're saying is about 440-ish. Uh, maybe I'll put at the bottom of the screen what the official is. Um, but yeah, he's saying that 350 is more than manageable, which is really impressive. And uh, like the kind of green credentials, the Fisker. And it looks really smart in red, for sure. Um, but the main reason I'm here today is to check out the Everati. And something that's really interesting, because the this particular Everati uh, has been doing the rounds for quite some time. Something that was really interesting to find out was the fact that they've recently upgraded the battery pack because uh, it was about 56 kilowatt hours before and now it's 60 kilowatt hours. And you'll notice that it's actually got some newer style wheels compared to what's been on recently. Uh, the deep dish on these are absolutely gorgeous. Um, and if people remember from my previous older videos that it's actually got the uh, uh, sort of the fake sound on it as well. Um, which uh, certainly divides the crowd and this is completely reversible uh, the EV conversion on this and it's a large drive unit Tesla motor and I'm sure that they've got other things in development they've got a Defender there as well which I'm going to find out a bit more about in a minute but yeah we're here with uh, for the Instavolt day and uh, it's quite interesting because um, they've got three different types of chargers here. They've got the charge point ones just over there. They've got the Alpatronic ones there, 150 kilowatt. And these are the BYD chargers. Uh, so it's interesting to see the three different generations of chargers. Um, oh, look, the fender's going. I didn't hear it, Ovs. Um, there's a lot of people in the industry here. Um, there's a guy from uh, an EV podcast, I forget his name. Uh, we've got Abby, who's a famous YouTuber. She's just getting a picture there with that young lady. Uh, I was talking to the guy who owns Instavolt or runs it. He actually drives this 69 plate Model 3 Performance, which has done about 80,000 miles, which was interesting to hear. And he says it's been absolutely faultless. Yeah, a whole wonderful range. That doesn't look very electric. Not sure why that's here. I was a little bit disappointed to see that a Defender was icing up uh, EV Bay, but it's actually plugged in. And it's plugged into a CCS2 charger. Now I've never seen a hybrid with a CCS2 charger, but I need to find out a bit more about this Defender. So it's a P400E and it can take CCS2. That is something I've never seen before. I mean, it's good to see that it's not iced up a, you know, a uh, space, but uh, interesting. Looks smart. 
So this is the Everati Defender uh, uh, Series 2, not Defender, which I got wrong earlier. Thanks, Jack, for uh, sort of my knowledge out there. But Jack, um, how, how long have you guys done the Series 2 for? So the Series 2, I think, well, was one of our first cars, but about two or three years ago now. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a 60 kilowatt hour, three Spirit Cars, three battery packs, uh, single motor. So you've got about 150 brake horsepower. Yeah. Um, we've got the original transfer, but transfer box in there so you've got your two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive select um and you can see it's been yeah meticulously restored yeah um, it's beautiful resto. yeah i was checking out these seven inch uh, lights which have been upgraded because i need to do something about my tvr lights uh you know to make it more efficient of course not yeah. just for looks of course <laughs> of course <laughs> what what sort of range are you getting out of the 60 kilowatt hour battery so real world tested range is about 125 miles um so that's mixed use motorways dual carriageway city center um obviously if you drive conservatively probably get out to 150 160 miles obviously with ccs char charging 22 kilowatt on board as well um, oh, okay yeah so wow you, you can charge this thing on a 22 kilowatt in three hours obviously ccs you're talking about 40 minutes. What, what can it take CCS sorry? Um, about 80 kilowatts. 80 kilowatts right. Um, yeah so you've got that 20 to 80 numbers quite impressive. Mm. Um, so it makes it actually quite usable um, yeah. and it's just great fun to drive. Uh, if anyone who's driven an old series like this they are. They are fun are they? And the uh, the four-wheel drive characteristics are still you know still still really good yeah so yep so like i say you've, you've still got the two wheel drive four wheel drive selector you've got high and low gear ratios on this so and the ground clearance is is as the original okay um, so theoretically you could go anywhere the original went just with more power more torque but this one's far too shiny that it won't let me do that yeah. um, it's a lovely color is, is it an original um original color I believe so. I can't remember what it's called. It's not Heritage Green or something along those lines. Sounds it is a Land Rover. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it's Bridge of Weir leather interior. Um, I see it's got the seats in the in the yes, back as well. Got the bench seats in the that looks back. great. Um, teak deck in, and then yeah, full custom Bridge of Weir interior. We've got completely remastered gauges, so they're all cam based. Are um, they Peterson gauges? They or? are not. I can't tell you who they are. Oh, they're they not Peterson. Um, maybe we should be later. Maybe. Um, <laughs> No, it looks then, yeah, beautiful. You've you still got the high and low select there, the red and yellow knobs, um, and then the shifter. It's basically a big switch for your forward and reverse. So you've got some nice solid detents in there, um, just to give that look and feel the original, the original touch points, really. Yeah. Um, and then, like I say, you've got the CCS Type 2 charge port yep. um, with a nice fuel filler cap. Ah. On there, so when it's plugged in, it obviously ah, looks very quite good. standard. Tidy. So yeah, I've got a few people um, having a go at you and you parking the charging bay before you, yes. before you charge. Before they realise what, what the thing is. And um, what's this QR, QR code so, yeah, on the back? that'll take you straight to my website. Oh, um, cool. If you want to have a look at anything else we do, the Porsches, the um, Mercedes Pagoda. Yep. Um, right there for you. There we go. For all those that want to see more information about Everati. Yeah, you can see the... Um, The teak decking. This is oh. So this is marine grey teak. So it's actually made by a, a boat builder. Um, quite a few of our customers suspect this because it's hard wearing and it looks really cool. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of what I expected. I mean, the the quality of the materials and everything else is is what I really expect from Everati, having seen the Porsche a, a few times before. Um, and is it completely reversible? Yep, completely reversible if you so wanted to. Um, you could take this all out, put your engine, your gearbox, fuel tanks back in. Yep. Um, I like to think nobody would ever want to do that because this thing is so much more easy to drive now. Yes, originals. I'm sure, um, yeah. No random gear selector. Um, no, manual. Um, no. No, it's, it's really, really impressive. And uh, have you got a Defender uh, that you guys are doing as well? Or yeah, you've got so any other sort of uh, this type of vehicle that is in yeah, the so works? Yeah, so you go on, go on our socials, go on the website, you see you've got the, the Land Rover Defender, um, also the Range Rover Classic as well. Yes, um, the yeah. Line. I do love a Range Rover Classic uh, converted. They look really, really tidy. Is it similar sort of battery and motor combinations? Similar, same, same DNA, I'd say. Obviously, it's designed for the application, um, yeah. but similar sort of. Give or take, right, give or take, right. And sorry, what was um, the kilowatt of the uh, motor? So this is 150, well, it's 150 brake. So it's okay, so like a. 20, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, in one of these, it's 
all you need. And what's the um, uh, voltage architecture on it? So this is uh, five to six hundred volt, so it's about five fifty nominal. Okay. Um, so going for a higher voltage. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're talking naught to sixty is about twelve seconds. Okay. Um, which again, in one of these, is more than enough. The original, if it got to sixty, is about twenty five seconds. Wow. Um, and then the <laughs> speed is limited to seventy. Again, you don't you don't need or want to go faster than that in one of these. Yeah. Um, even with disc brakes, power steering all those sensible upgrades, um, adjustment dampers and things like that, it's still fundamentally Series 2 Land Rover. Yeah. Um, so being very pragmatic with the limits in place really. Cool. Here we have the Porsche Everati EV conversion and there's been a few updates recently. Jack is here again to tell us uh, a little bit more about the upgrade. So I've seen it quite a few times. I first saw it when it was in the red the Everati 911 964 EV conversion. Then it's had the uh, change of exterior to the Golf colours. Got some new wheels on it now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a new set of HREs. Um, I don't know what exact ones they are, but they're very nice. It's had the interior has been retrimmed. So interior retrimmed, okay, cool. Hands, tooth, quite classic. Yep. Quite classic Porsche look. Um, it's also had big ones, the new batteries, put in new battery upgrades, so we're now getting about 60 kilowatt hours. And I'm sure that you guys are going to be up dating her uh, moving forward uh, maybe different architectures different motors and things like that so uh, oh. open, I'll show you. The, um, they've redone the front front trim so oh have they yeah I do remember it as before as you can see a very small fruit uh, for a very small suitcase for the weekend if you look at this video up above me it is a video I did at Goodwood Festival of Speed a couple of years ago and you would have seen it there oh yeah it's completely different yeah it's a really really neat um, and you've got storage under here for your charging cables. Uh, okay, because it looks like it's got less storage. Is that because of the batteries? Or? Yeah, slight change in battery. Right, um, I so see. So that fits a really nice charge cable under there. So, right, so you've lost a bit more of the front. Slightly. Um, there's never really much of a front. No, there wasn't. With. There wasn't. It looks really smart, though. Yeah, it's getting really, really neat. Um, and it's... Uh, is that the, that's like the chassis and plate we've got to it. so yeah no thank you thank you jack for giving us a rundown on the upgrades and uh hopefully we'll uh, see you guys again soon yeah, certainly. hi richard hey. he's turned up in his tesla model 3 now those who've watched the uh previous video recently of the ev meet would have seen richard's car and i thought what a great opportunity to uh, uh basically get some more detail about what richard's done to his tesla model 3 and what the plans are so richard what have you done so far um, to your it's a performance, performance isn't it yep 2019 stock wheels eye back suspension uh 20 mil spaces on the rear, 15 mil spaces on the front. And that looks looks good. Um, just a bit of body kit, Maxton front lip, side skirts. And there's a rear diffuser on the back as well. Yeah, because it's quite a chunky rear diffuser on the back. What was the... Uh, it's all oh, carbon effect. Oh, there, that's a, just a cheap old Amazon carbon effect spoiler. Yeah, that's no, quite a chunky <laughs> Self, one. Self attached. And you got the Maxton rear yeah. splitter as well. Rear the Nice. This is all right. I don't know. I'm not. I'm undecided if it's, if it's worth bothering, but yeah. I was. Not? I was looking at the rear diffusers uh, the, only the other day, the one with the kind of shiny red light in the middle, which is quite cool. So uh, yeah. what's the, uh, what, what are the plans? I know we've been talking about Matt and past performance spherical bearings, but what, what's the plans um, and what are you going to use it for? Yeah, I wouldn't mind you know, trying out some track days, so possibly getting, the, possibly getting some new lower arm control arms, uh, power flex ones possibly that from TiVo. Yep. Um, possibly coilovers, but that's a bit more money. Yeah. So either mountain pass or something similar. Yeah. But I'd love some adjustable ones which I can adjust without having to get underneath the car. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Mountain pass might be the ones that do or unplug do. Ones yeah. Which well, th th this is what we were just talking about—the fact that you know we both don't have garages with lifts, and it does yeah. kind of mount up, and to have that flexibility of being able to adjust the suspension with a touch of a button is is, is really really good so good. and we were talking about drifting as well yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't know it's that like boy boy kind of race uh, like yeah want to use the power it's, and it does it does go around in the car park quite well what do we call it we don't call it tokyo drift what do we call it instead um uh i don't know american drift because they're both american spec yeah. the old chrome, chrome. next to rusty here 
Yeah, got to stick with the chrome. None of those. You're gonna stick out. with. See, I'm I'm still debating whether to go for the white on mine or to stick with the chrome. Ah, I've never I'm, thought of white. Ah, well, if you go and have a look at my Tesla video, where we're at the Tesla Bista Heritage, there was a Model X with white. It did look okay. good. It did look good, but yeah, no, yeah. thanks, Richard. Thanks for giving us the lowdown on your Model Three. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Nothing cool. else. Nothing too severe. Wicked. No, thanks for joining us. Nice one, Richard. Appreciate it. So that's it. Uh, I've been here for many more hours than I thought I was going to be because there's some really interesting cars here and loads of people to speak to. I mean, I was speaking to the main guy from Instavolt, a really good guy, the guys from Everati as well. Um, so, yeah, really good event. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to the Yorkshire EV uh, me. So that's going to be really interesting as well. So you'll probably get some footage of that. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.